Move on to uh, uh, question seven, uh, real quick. Oh, by the way, these are the last report was a 56-page PDF uh, consultant report uh, about our police department, uh, the operations, and they're all available at this website. So go to the web website. Right at the top of the page is a 2015 Hermosa Beach City Council debate questions, and as you go through the questions, you'll see the links to all these reports. So debate question seven background. This was a report put together by a community dialogue group in Hermosa Beach. So these were volunteers. I attended some of the meetings and some of our candidates attended some of the meetings. And anyway, the community dialogue uh, group put together a uh, phase two finance subgroup and they did a report on the financial, financial and physical condition, physical condition of Hermosa Beach. And uh, that report is uh, at that website. And basically the, what they found is our public safety budget, which is the Hermosa Beach Police Department and the Hermosa Beach Fire Department, make up about 56% of our budget. And that was the last fiscal year, so about 56%. And the report compares our financial and fiscal uh, condition uh, to six California cities, so uh, coastal communities, all coastal on the, on the coast like Hermosa Beach. And they are Hermosa Beach, Laguna Beach, Manhattan Beach, Rancho Palos Verdes, uh, Sausalito, and Solano Beach. And some of the takeaways from the uh, community dialogue report, uh, Hermosa Beach had the highest crime rate, R RPV the lowest, Rancho Palos Verdes the lowest. And then another takeaway, Hermosa Beach, uh, highest crime rate, but it includes all types, even though public safety is the highest expen ex expenditure. And then I'll just uh, hit the, uh, the six cities. Uh, Hermosa Beach was ranked number one in violent crime and in their crime index, not violent crime. They had a crime index and that, that com combined all types of crime, not just violent. And um, Hermosa turned out to be number one out of those six coastal cities in California. Um, since the report was released in 2013, real quick, uh, Hermosa Beach in 2014, we had 1.8 times of violent crime rate compared to Manhattan Beach. Violent crime includes rape, robbery, aggravated assault, and homicide. In 2014, we had 2.3 times the misdemeanor arrest rate compared to Manhattan, Manhattan, Manhattan Beach. In 2014, Hermosa had 2.8 times the misdemeanor arrest rate compared to Redondo Beach. Debate question seven. Data, data from the Hermosa Beach Community Dialogue Finance Group report uh, showed that public safety budget in Hermosa Beach includes, which includes the uh, Hermosa Beach Police Department and Fire Department, made up about 56% of the city's fiscal budget 2013-14. What are your top priorities in the next four years for public safety operations in Hermosa Beach? And that would be for Ken. Uh, if we can bring more tax revenue into Hermosa Beach and start spending it on other things, that automatically pushes down our 56% without changing the numbers. It pushes down the 56% that's spent on public safety. Still the same actual dollar figure, it's just the percentage goes down. What I would uh, suggest we do moving forward is to sustain our full staffing levels for the police department. They need to work with a full staff. They can't work partially staffed. Our um, overtime charges go sky high and we're losing that manpower pool. We also need to ensure that our total compensation package for the officers is comparable to our neighboring cities. Um, when you look at our salaries, our salaries tend to be lower than the 17 neighboring cities. I'm not quite sure that's on the total compensation, but at least on the salary portion, we're lower than 17 of our neighboring cities. Uh, we need to ensure that we get comparable uh, rates. We also need to make sure that those east of the highway are seeing our police. I often hear, since I've been here, that east of the highway feels completely ignored and like they're a separate city from Hermosa Beach. They need to make sure that they're seeing our officers patrolling that area so they don't feel that their security is just headed to the downtown. Um, that's it. Okay, thanks, Ken. And we'll go to Jeff. Well, we're talking a lot about alcohol. I guess I want to, for the record, I'm not against alcohols or bars. In fact, I could really use a drink right about now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but drinking comes with a responsibility from the person consuming it to the person selling and serving it. And that, that's what I want to focus on. I mean, there are business operators in the downtown, not all, but some, who need to take their due responsibility for the negative impacts their operations bring to our city, from liquoring folks up and unleashing them back into the world, wiping their hands of any responsibility when these drunk individuals get behind the wheel of a car or drunkenly maraud through our neighborhoods. 
there is a responsibility, and we have tried and unsuccessfully tried, and I, uh, I, I was successful in reactivating the city's uh, weekly meetings or with the, with the Tavern Owners Association, and there uh, a lot of talk about things they were going to do to help out, but in the end of the day, uh, it has to be cooperative. The people creating the problem have to be part of the solution of the problem, or then if they're not, then we have to deal with that as well, and we don't as a city. We give them a pass most of the time, and that's got to stop. Thanks, uh, Jeff. Uh, Trent? Okay, I would be in favor again of a strengthening our neighborhood watch program so that we utilize the modern communications that we have so that all of the safe neighborhoods in Hermosa, which are most of the town, uh, we can have ways to quickly get a hold of the police officer sh should we need them. 56% of our budget is a huge amount of budget. It's more than half. You think of anything you as a person spend 56% on, you probably can't name one thing that you spend half your money on. And here we are as a town, we're spending half our money on the police and fire. So we need to really maximize those dollars and get the most for them. And really when I talk to people and what I hear in the report and what I read is we really have one basic problem to solve and that would take care of the big bite of the apple. And I think we can do that with redeploying resources. We can do it by targeting the problem, making it a public priority, stating it publicly. You saw how we did it with the 4th of July. It worked. We published the fact that we're not going to let people uh, ransack our town. And it really toned it down. And I think we need to do the same kind of thing. Because I don't, I'm not, I don't drink, OK? But I used to. But I don't anymore. And it's been a long time. But I'm not opposed to uh, alcohol and having fun either. But I do think, though, late night when people are intoxicated, that we do need to, for their own safety and the safety of others, perhaps start throwing them, some of them in the drunk tank. And I think that would stop a lot of our problems that we have. Thanks, Trent. Pete? Uh, thank you. The, one of the problems downtown is the constant influx of a massive amount of visitors. And these visitors come what we call pre-primed. They'll drink at home till about 10, 11 o'clock, come on down to our, our city. By then, they're probably halfway there to being obnoxious if they already aren't. And there again, that, that's a problem that somehow I don't know how we solve. Uh, but it's, it's there. I think our police need to be more aware of that. Our police department, according to the last report we got from the chief, is we're at full strength now. We finally have hired our last officer, and we have that officer and one other one, they're still on probation, so technically they're still not full time yet because there's a probationary period. But this kind of goes back to what we can do to reduce that amount. In most cities, if you look at their budgets, we're probably close to what we spend for, we're not only talking police, we're talking fire also. So there's, uh, and when we say public safety, um, some of the things we could do, I know. Uh, our chief, Chief Lancer, who is now leaving us, has uh, been working with Manhattan Beach to look at possible mergers of our two departments, which would save money and spread the resources out and, and better servicing for everyone. Um, I'd like, Pete. yeah, I'd like to see the Beach City Health District provide emergency medical treatment, EMT service uh, funding, and, and set up a joint powers agreement with Hermosa, Manhattan, and Redondo to run our. Uh, EMT T, uh, responses. And uh, once again, uh, is how many people do we want to invite either during the day, the capacity of the hotels, it will all influence what we need to do in our hiring procedures, and that, that number might even go up higher. Because in not, not only do we have police to pay for, we have all the other infrastructure wear and tear that we're going to have to repair based on their being there, even though the TOT will help uh, pay for some of that. But it's, it's a big, big problem, but uh, we can hire, bring in more people every now and then, do it randomly, and 
and set a precedent. That way they never know. We do have video cameras down there now that hopefully are helping with these uh, crimes. We installed all those in the downtown in the parking structure. So hopefully that's helping also. Thank Thanks, you. Pete. Justin? Uh, we spend similar amounts on public safety, but we have different challenges. Uh, that's essentially what the finance group found out. Um, our solutions are to better manage our resources and to give our police officers the tools that they need to get the job done. Um, so the question is, what are your top priorities for public safety? And it's largely the answer to the prior question. We brought in ICMA, a very credible group, to look at our police operations, and they made specific recommendations. We need to follow up on those recommendations and implement them. Create a strategic plan, change shift scheduling so sergeants and officers work together consistently and solve problems create a dedicated downtown enforcement unit. And there's two additional items. One is determine whether we need a force of 39. We currently have 37. Can we handle the challenge that we have with 37? Or do we need to add 39 so that we can focus on the downtown area? And lastly, we need to push the council to budget to rebuild our police and fire facilities. They were built in 1959. 20 years ago, we looked at the fire department, and the conclusion was, you're throwing good money after bad, spending any more money on this building. But we've been putting Band-Aids on it for 20 years, and the police department's the same thing. Again, we need to get realistic about a plan that's going to allow us to renovate those buildings to give our police departments and fire departments the tools they need to get the job done in a very challenging environment. So. Um, in summary, I would simply say we need to protect our police officers by giving them the resources to solve problems rather than put Band-Aids on them. And implementing and paying for the ICMA recommendations is the first step to achieving that goal. Thanks, Justin. 